Good evening. I'm Cislina Ledbetter, representing the League of Women Voters of Bellingham and Whatcom County. Founded in 1920, the League is a nonpartisan organization with more than 700 affiliates in all 50 states. Our goals are to encourage informed and active participation in government, increase an understanding of major public policy issues, and influence public policy through education and advocacy. The League never endorses candidates or political parties. Membership is open to all people ages 16 and older, and we invite you to join. Tonight's forum is being broadcast on VTV and the City of Bellingham YouTube channel. Recordings of this program will be available on the League of Women Voters of Bellingham Whatcom County website, lwvbellinghamwhatcom.org. The forum will be rebroadcast on BTV and on 102.3 KMRE Community Radio through Election Day, November 8th. No portion of this forum may be rebroadcast in part or in full without the written consent of the League of Women Voters, Bellingham, Whatcom County. The Cascadia Daily News, Linden Tribune, Salish Current, the Northern Light and 102.3 KMRE Community Radio are media partners. Tonight, we're hosting speakers from our community to present the pro and con information on Proposition 5 to understand the intent of this proposed legislation and the effect on county residents if this measure passes or fails. This proposition would authorize Whatcom County to levy an additional regular property tax at the rate of 19 cent per $1,000 of assessed valuation on all taxable property within Whatcom County to fund increased early childhood programs and affordable childcare to improve kindergarten readiness and increased access to support for homeless and otherwise vulnerable children. The levy would be authorized for a 10 year period with collection beginning in 2023. Levy funds would be deposited in a separate fund, Healthy Children's Fund, which would be subject to an independent performance audit every other year to evaluate progress and recommend improvements or adjustments. It's our goal to present balanced information about this ballot measure so that you, the voter, can decide whether or not to approve it. We will now give each speaker 30 seconds to introduce themselves and we'll start with you, um, Mike Haynes. Sorry, technologically okay, challenged that's here all a little right. bit. Can you hear me all right? I can. Hello, my name is Mike Hamas. I'm a local business owner. I own and operate a construction company here in town. We employ about 70 people and I uh, have lived in Whatcom County for almost 40 years. I came up here to go to school. I met my spouse. I've raised two children and they're now out of the house and um, just love this part of the country. I love this community and I'm, I'm happy to be here. So hopefully that's uh, an introduction enough. That's awesome. Thank you so much. Emily O'Connor. Hi, everyone. Thanks for having us here tonight. Uh, my name is Emily O'Connor, and Whatcom County has been my home since I was 17. I'm now raising my three kids here. They're four, nine, and 11, and have spent the past 10 years advocating for children and families experiencing homelessness through my work at Lydia Place. I've also spent about a decade working with survivors of domestic violence and sexual assault, as well as working in foster care with uh, children experiencing abuse and neglect. And Eons ago, spent a little bit of time as the director of an early learning center for the Y. Um, it's been a privilege to be a part of the community group that drafted the Healthy Children's Fund, and I'm excited right. to hear about that tonight. Thank you, Emily. So that's the pro side. And Lori, you're next up. Lori Williams. You're on mute still, Lori? Mute. There, there we go. go. Okay, so my name is Lori Williams. Um, we moved, my husband and I moved our five children here in 1989 uh, for a better opportunity. We were foster parents. We have 25 grandkids. Um, 
four of my five children have went to school, got education and degrees, and one is running a construction company here in Whatcom County. So, you know, being a teenage mom uh, at the age of 16 and five by the time I was 23, I have to say my husband and I did an amazing job uh, raising. So we understand the necessary need of childcare, but also understand the necessary need of family. Thank you, Lori. All right, and Lori's representing the con side. Okay, so here are the rules we'll follow tonight. There will be no formal opening statements by the speakers. The introductory question is tailored to elicit responses consistent with opening statements. Each side will have one and a half minutes to respond to the question. It is up to each side who will speak during that time. Each side will give a two minute closing statement. I will ask the pro side to start first and we'll alternate the order for each question. The timer displayed on the screen will count down your time. The timer will start as soon as you begin speaking. It will be purple when you begin, then turn yellow when 15 seconds remain. When time is up, the timer will turn red. If you continue to speak after the time limit, we may cut your microphone. Okay, any questions regarding the rule? No. All right, so if the timer is ready, we can start. And we'll start with the pro side. I'll ask the first question of the pro side. What are the implications of this initiative from your perspective? We'll have to, that's the, not being in the same room, it's hard to decide who's, I know. who's gonna yeah. go, but we'll figure it out, we'll, okay. we'll, we'll work it out. Okay. Um, I will uh, happily go first and say that my hope for the Healthy Children's Fund is that as a community, we can start to wrap our arms around the children and families who call Whatcom County home. And now is a really great time for us to make investments in this community, to really think about the impact that those investments have for future generations. We know that 90% of brain development happens before age five. And we can see the consequences in our community of not taking care of our kids. And this is a really important time for us to be able to make some critical investments. And the Healthy Children's Fund will allow us to do a few um, amazing things, including expanding early learning and care in every corner of Whatcom County where our families really need it most so that families can get back to work knowing that their kids are safe and cared for so that families have opportunities and choices about the types of early learning environments their children are in. And so that we can invest in vulnerable children and families to prevent uh, homelessness, to increase housing stability, to increase access to critical behavioral and mental health supports. And from the time that a child is born, really wrap our arms around the families in our community because when we get it right for kids, we get it right for everyone and can make a community that we all want to live and thrive and grow in. Thanks. Great. Thank you. Same question for the con side. Would you like me to repeat the question, Lori? Okay, and you're on mute. What are the implications of this initiative from your perspective? Well, the implications of this uh, child levy, from my perspective, I think is going to do more harm to the innocent families that are going to be suffering the amount of money that's going to be taken off their table to provide for a minimal amount of children. So we're talking maybe five to 10,000 to hundreds of thousands of children who could go without food on their table, possibility of losing the roof over their head. One of the parents having to go get a second time job in order for them to be able to make ends meet. I know that it states that it's only 19 cents per thousand, but that's not the only tax initiatives that are coming up. We have a ton that is going to hit us by 2023. So $7.92 per thousand for this on an average home. When you talk about somebody's home at 589,000, it's more than $7.92. When you talk about the rest of the taxes and the assessed values of people's homes, this is really going to put an impact on individual families that are already having a hard time with high gas, high food, electricity, and all the rest of it. So I feel that this is hurting families more than it's going to help the minimal amount of families that we're talking about. 
Thank you, Lori. All right, for the, I'm gonna start with you this time, Lori. Please share the top three considerations for voters when they make their decision on this initiative. Well, the top three, I'm gonna mm -hmm. just say, it's family, your children, your household, your necessary means, the food you put on the table, the time that you are taken away from your own family for other situations, this being one of them. Um, it's, I think everybody needs to realize that if we would have done this two years ago when we were in a better situation uh, before the pandemic, I think we would have probably been more, more leaning towards this. But the unfortunate situation is we have gone through a pandemic. Thousands of people have lost their jobs. They are trying to regroup. They're trying to get back on their feet. They're trying to keep a roof over their heads already. And for the amount of people, I mean, if you look at the statistics just recently, they state that there's less than 867 homeless people and only, I think they said 7% actually have to do with children. There's other ways and means that we can help those families without hurting other families. Thank you, Lori. I'm gonna ask the same question of the pro side. Would you like for me to repeat the question? That'd be great, yes. Okay, please share the top three considerations for voters when they make their decision on this initiative. I'm, I think I'm coming at this from a little different perspective um, in terms of I'm not in the space. I'm not in the child care space. Uh, you know, I generally am not a fan of, of taxes or waste, um, but I am a fan of children. And so considerations that, that I've thought of and I think others uh, are thinking of are the transparency. Um, we have a citizen advised panel that's going to um, make the recommendations to the county for the spending. We have accountability in terms of the audit every year. Um, and, and I think uh, it's courage, you know, it takes courage. I think that if, as people look at this, uh, the price of not doing something uh, is, is very, very important to consider. Um, I've talked to a lot of the, uh, the folks that um, are, are, it's said that are going to be most affected by this. And the response I get from workforce uh, folks, from lower income folks is, you know what, I'm happy to spend $8 a month uh, toward this uh, levy because I recognize that a lot of hands make a heavy lift easy. And over and over again, as I've tried to um, query lots and lots of people, I find that folks are in support and they recognize that. So courage, transparency, accountability, uh, and many hands make a heavy lift easy. That's what I would consider. Thank you, Mike. All right, we're gonna start with the pro side this time. To the extent that you did not respond to this in the first question, who in our community will be helped if this initiative passes? Oh, I love that question. Uh, it's an easy answer, it's everyone. When we take care of children, everyone wins. My children are too old to benefit directly. They don't need childcare anymore. Uh, and they don't, they, we're not gonna experience homelessness. So this isn't, that's not, it's not about direct benefit, but when we take care of kids, every single person in the community benefits. We have, um, we have healthy kids in our school system. We have healthy workers to show up for our businesses, healthy patrons, everybody wins when we create a community where families can live and thrive. And, um, and that's something really important for us to remember. When we don't make those investments, we see the consequences in our downtowns. We see the consequences throughout our community. We've got children who um, do not have access to the basic needs uh, throughout Whatcom County. At Lydia Place, we have a waiting list right now for homelessness that is larger than it's been in my nearly 11 years on the job. We have 180 families on our waiting list. And, um, and that's the tip of the iceberg. That's like the, some of the highest need. When we make investments upstream, when we get it right from the beginning, it costs us all significantly less down the road. It is a smart economic investment and it's a smart self, it's a vote of self-interest, but it's also a compassionate vote. Um, supporting kids is the way that we make a healthy community for everyone to be able to thrive. 
Thank you, Emily. So now, Lori, I'm going to ask you that same question. Would you like for me to repeat the question? Okay. To the extent you did not respond to this in the first question, who in our community will be helped if this initiative passes? And you're on mute. Okay. I'm not sure. Um, there's not enough information in this crop bill to tell us uh, who's going to be actually helped by this, even though the taxpayers, the property payers, are going to be footing the bill for this. Unfortunately, I think this is going to be a downhill battle because this is going to hit the table of the renters. And so when you're main class is your middle class in Whatcom County, um, who are already still trying to make ends meet. What is the threshold of the dollar? So if these guys are making $80,000 as a family of five, and they're paying this extra tax out, plus all the rest of the stuff, where's the threshold that says their newborn baby is going to fall underneath the criteria of being helped? because it happens the same thing with Department of Social and Health Services. It happens with Opportunity Councils, the Salvation Army, Catholic Community Services. All of these services are already in place that is either funded, nonprofit, profit by taxpayers. None of this tells us that there is a threshold that you are over the income limit and that your child, even though you're suffering and you're paying for it, is not going to be benefited by this service. So when we say everybody, I'm sorry, there's not enough information in this initiative to state that. Thank you, Lori. We'll start with you um, for this next question. And um... It, it, it may help you kind of sort of continue. I think you've sort of answered this, but to the extent you did not respond to this in the um, first question, who may be harmed if this initiative passes? Uh, anybody who lives in Whatcom County. And this is just gonna be a rundown of some of the things that are gonna be harmed. We have a property increase of 4.8% just in 2022. Um, it cost over $342.11 just to feed one person. And that isn't an infant who needs diapers and formula that just isn't $2.29 a gallon. Um, Bellingham cost of living has exceeded and it's at the high one of, out of 39 counties, we rank nine. Um, the price of gasoline, I just filled up my car today, $5.11. Um, the medium household income or the medium house that can be bought in Whatcom County supposedly for a three bedroom is about $585,000. It's up 22.9%. Um, let's see, I can just continue to go on and on. The Climate Act, which is going to hit us in 2022, which is going to cost 46 cents, well actually right now, 46 cents per gallon with an increase up to 82 cents. By 2030, 89 cents. The annual wage in Whatcom County is 59,222. Whatcom County generally has levy wages, um, which is unemployment rate of 7.4. That was in 2021. So when we're talking about all the things that's going to affect these families, what these guys are doing are not thinking of the implications that this is going to create. Thank you, Lori. And now I'm going to go over to the pro side to the extent you did not respond to this in the first question, who may be harmed if this initiative passes? Thanks. That's a great question. It's always important for us to think about the full effect of anything that we do. And as we experiment together to make a great community, we have to pay attention to our unintended impacts sometimes as well. Um, this is a question on your ballot of whether to vote yes for the Healthy Children's Fund, which is a property tax levy or to vote no. But really the question that we're asking voters is you can vote yes to this property tax. We know exactly how much it will cost you or you can vote no and the cost of not doing those things of not investing in our families is significant. And we don't have that number. Uh, and so it's a little bit hard sometimes to do that comparison, but we must remember when we're filling out our ballot that inaction or, or um, a refusal to take action is also an action of itself, and there's consequences to that. 
right now we are seeing inflation is high. That is all the more reason why we have to show up for our community and make sure that we are investing, deeply investing in expanding opportunities for families to be able to call Whatcom County home. And right now we have a supply and demand issue with childcare. Workers, middle-class workers, it doesn't matter if you have resources or not, you cannot find childcare in Whatcom County. We are 5,000 sh uh, spots short. And that means everybody is harmed when we don't invest in these resources. So I think it's important for us to really take the whole picture into consideration when we look at whether to vote yes or no for a property tax like the Healthy Children's Fund. Thank you, Emily. And the next question, we're gonna start with the pro side. <clears throat> Regardless of your position, if this initiative passes, what would be the best outcome from its enactment? Best outcome. The best outcome would be increased child care slots. It would be taking care of our most vulnerable children. It would be, um, gosh, well, I mean, those two basic things ripple and ripple and ripple. So uh, that, those would be great outcomes. I, I'm in, very interested in the transparency side of this. You know, I. Mm -hmm. I can't really drill into the weeds uh, on some of the items, but I love the experiment uh, that this tax provides to the government. You know, there's very conservative folks that say this might be a great model for taxing and government operations moving forward, the transparency and the accountability. So I'm quite interested in that. The, the obvious is we're gonna elevate kids, we're gonna take care of kids, we're gonna help folks that can't find daycare uh, in all strata. You know, so um, 5,000 spots short, that affects everybody. But I love, I love uh, the experiment, the social experiment on the tax side. And, and I, I'm going to follow the trans, uh, transparency and the accountability. I look forward to the annual report. I look forward to uh, professional independent accounting every other year uh, and how our council operates and how our executive operates when these recommendations are uh, brought forward. So, um, I guess I would close with that. Great. Thank you. All right, Lori, would you like for me to repeat the question? Okay. Regardless of your position, if this initiative passes, what would be the best outcome from its enactment? Well, if this passes, I can only hope that it is. Uh, a, that it does have transparency because anything in government right now has no transparency. Um, so I, I'm a little concerned with this. Uh, Whatcom County voters already pay into a homeless fund. There's, look at all the homeless people still out there on the streets. We pay into mental health through our tax dollars again. Look at how many mental health issues we have. We had 116 childcare facilities in Whatcom, Bellingham and Whatcom County until they decided to make it so difficult for these home daycares to afford all of the things that they wanted them to do. We are now down to 39. So ask yourself, why are we short? When they close so many of them down, that is the good reason why we are short daycare slots. So when government starts to impose themselves on the general public, we should step back and ask ourselves, why? Why are we putting our money towards something when we already had something. And not only that, but Biden gave $39 billion to bail out childcare facilities just last year. So why ask more from the taxpayer now when we've already had these things in process and until our government decided that they didn't want them? Thank you, Lori. We're gonna start with you, um, the con side, for this next question. What will be the outcome if this legislation does not pass? Well, I think the outcome of this would be is it's going to bring people back to the table to make them stop and think about what's going on in our community, how we can better help people. Maybe instead of thinking about putting in another government imposed facility on the taxpayers, maybe we th should think about how can we fund the mother to stay home and take care of her child? Maybe we can help them do the transition until the child is 
you know, ready to go to early learning hood facilities. There's other means that we can help the family so the mother can stay home with the child. If I just gave birth and now you want to take my child zero to five, I'm, I have to tell you, the answer is no, because that child belongs to me. That child is my responsibility. Everybody else can make choices if they want to stay home. I was a stay-at-home mom. My husband worked for many, many years, and child, our child, our youngest child was in, in kindergarten. I started my own business. We survived on $13 an hour. So if I can do it at such a young age, we can do it today. There's no reason for the government to continue to interject themselves in families' lives. Thank you, Lori. Now we're gonna go to the pro side with the same question. What will be the outcome if this legislation does not pass? You know, I was thinking today, as we were in this really thick blanket of smoke that it feels like a, a flashing red warning signal about not thinking too far ahead. And I remember the days when smoke wasn't a thing here and now it's not a matter of if it's a matter of how many days will we have really smoky skies. And um, if we don't make these investments and really think about the long-term consequences, that is a pain that we all feel. We will see homelessness continue to rise if we do not make investments in vulnerable families. We will see homelessness continue to rise if parents can't get back to work because they have no safe space to leave their kids. We see that now where parents are making really tough choices about whether or not to give up a job or to maybe have to leave a kid somewhere where they don't feel quite safe leaving them there. That means more childhood trauma. We know that childhood trauma leads to all sorts of negative outcomes over the course of kiddos' lives. We see 50% of our kids in Whatcom County not show up to kindergarten with the resources and the supports that they need to thrive, and that has a compounding effect. 88% of the businesses in Whatcom County report that childcare is a problem for them hiring and retaining workers here in Whatcom County. That has a huge impact on our economy and our ability to attract businesses to Whatcom County, and we need a safe place for businesses and for families. If we continue to fail to make investments that make it possible for Whatcom County to be a place for families and children to thrive, we will continue to see the consequences that we're seeing today. Thank you, Emily. We're gonna start now with the pro side. I'm gonna ask you, what are the implementation challenges that you foresee and how might they be addressed? Um, that's a great question. I love that question. You know, we're humans and uh, with humans, things tend to always be more complicated than we think. Um, what we have done with this ordinance is we've really welcomed all ideas at the table. We want this to be something that is uh, written by the community for the community and these dollars then get deployed right back out to the community in the way they were intended. And that means um, things take time and we have to be really thoughtful about uh, making sure that the dollars are spent the way they were meant to be spent. Um, I share the frustrations about sometimes the slowness or the restrictions of government. A vast majority of resources that get pumped out into this community are state and federal dollars that come with high restrictions. That does not work for the kids and families here in Whatcom County. We want families to have choices about, the kid, about their care for their kids and whether or not they want to work. And that means that we have to show up for all of the hard work that comes in implementation and make sure that through accountability, through having clear outcomes and objectives and for listening and welcoming, this is a, this is a bipartisan, nonpartisan um, initiative that has really wide support because it's a space where all of those ideas, like let's bring our best ideas and then figure out how we do this best together. Um, that's what I love about the Healthy Children's Fund. And I think that's um, patience is what we will need as we, as we implement. We wanna be fast, but we wanna be effective. Thank you, Emily. Now we're going to move to the con side. Lori, what are the implementation challenges that you foresee and how might they be addressed? Well, I mean, the implementation plan here in their, their own paperwork says the plan to allocate no less than 55% and no more than 68% of the levy revenue and proceeds to improving early learning and care through the 
the strategies outlined in paragraph 3A1 and shall allocate no less than 20% and no more than 36% of the levity revenues and proceeds to supporting the vulnerable children. So we're talking 8.2 million, and that was on last year's levy. Now we're talking over 12 million. We're only going to put 20 to 36 percent, no more than 36 percent. So when they're stating that this is all about implementing for the children, for the vulnerability of the children, why is it not flipped around? Why are we not putting 68 percent to the vulnerability of the children and 20 to 36 percent for the implementation? Where is this facility going to be? Where are they going to house them? Are they going to build one? Are we going to integrate them into our school systems? If we don't have the facilities now, how are you going to supply that facility? So tell me how you're going to do that at whatever it is that you're asking from us and how is this going to benefit the children and when is it going to start to benefit the children? Hmm. Thank you, Lori. The next question is going to be yours, Lori. Um, what are the evaluation challenges that you foresee and how might they be addressed? Evaluation? The and evaluation I've... challenges. The evaluation challenges. Oh, um, you know what? I don't even know where to start with that one, honestly. Um, I, I don't know. I'm at a loss for words on this one, honestly, because I there's so much wrong with this whole entire process to evaluate this, to figure out what is good and what is bad. There is nothing good about this, and it's the worst thing for this community. So to evaluate the possibility that we might find a 50-50 strategy, that we can all come together as a community, provide what we need, and, and to give back. It, where we need to give it, I don't know. Uh, to evaluate how many how many places like Nooksack, who already has implementation for childcare for them, Lummi, who has theirs, the Shukums, uh, every tribal facility has it. And if you look at the statistics, most of these kids are all tribal. So if we're dumping money into that, how do you evaluate a situation when you're adding taxpayers dollars? So when we're talking about vulnerable children, we're talking about across the board where it needs to go strategically. And I don't think that this is implementing and evaluating the necessary need for for our community at this moment. Thank you, Lori. We're gonna go over to the pro side and ask the same question. What are the evaluation challenges that you foresee and how might they be addressed? Thanks. I, um, I love that question, actually. This is something we talked a lot about in drafting this ordinance, because again, we really wanna see effectiveness with these dollars. And um, one of the things that I love most about the Healthy Children's Fund is that we have really built in an accountability structure that is very new and unique. And so we have dedicated dollars in the fund for an external outside evaluator to be able to come in and give us a really clear, give us as the community, a really clear scorecard on how well are we doing? How well are we delivering against the promises that we made to taxpayers when we said, entrust, let's entrust this fund with those critical, crucial dollars. So we have a three-part accountability system that includes a citizen advisory board, which is uh, up and running currently and uh, poised to take on this job. We've asked them to give a report card every year to county council and to the public, as well as to evaluate the fund with an external evaluator that can really look at all of the details and the data. And um, it's new, we'll learn a lot, but that's part of, the, part of the benefit of this fund is that we get to have flexible, dollars that are locally controlled, we get to test things, see how well they're working, and then expand upon the things that are working really well for families. We also have providers and a community network that are used to reporting. And so we've got a lot of strengths to draw from in this community to make sure that the evaluation is front and center in this fund. Thank you, Emily. <clears throat> We're gonna start with the pro side on this next question. This initiative deals with complex and challenging issues. Describe how you collaborated with community partners to craft the initiative or to craft your response to the initiative to understand the impact 
of the initiative to the community? You really do make great questions. And Mike, I'm, I'm hogging the microphone here. Apologies. <laughs> um, you know, this is an issue that we've been working on for a really long time. And one of the things that Whatcom County is really good at, I think this will probably resonate with folks, is we're good at looking at a problem. We're good at studying a problem. We're good at making plans even. But we oftentimes lack the follow through to see, to see through the solutions that we have um, identified are needed. And with the Healthy Children's Fund, this was a very lengthy process of engaging stakeholders, community groups, family members, parents, saying, what do you need? What do you need for childcare? What do you need to be healthy? What do you need to get back to work? Do you wanna work? What type of early learning environments are important to you? Where are they important to you? We know that services right now, what services there are, are really centralized in Bellingham. So this fund, the Healthy Children's Fund, it was important that this was countywide because we need services in every corner of Whatcom County. And that is a reflection of those voices at the table. This is, uh, this is a piece of legislation drafted by community members on behalf of the community. That's what the Healthy Children's Fund is. Um, and we've been engaging in that work for many years. And it's not easy. It's not easy to bring a lot of voices to the table and really listen. But uh, when you do, we end up with a better idea at the end. We say, oh, that's such a good idea. Let us go back and think about that and integrate that feedback. Um, and really centering family voice was incredibly important to us as we were looking at how to make the biggest impact for kids. Thank you, Emily. I'm gonna ask you the same question, the con side, Lori. This initiative deals with complex and challenging issues. Describe how you collaborated with community partners to craft the initiative or to craft your response to the initiative to understand the impact of the initiative to the community. Well, I think that this was something that they had been working on since 2019. So right at, right at the beginning of the pandemic, going through the pandemic, when there wasn't a lot of people who could actually meet. So they were probably doing Zoom calls or whatever the case is. Uh, kids are out of school. Um, you know, we're doing home learning here in our houses with our grandkids. Uh, so Obviously, this was something that people brought together uh, and thought this was a great idea. Um, you know, I raised my teenagers here. I've been out on the streets with salt, salt on the streets with my husband as dealing with the homeless teenagers and the mental health and all the rest of the stuff. Um, you know, we have put money in and put money in. There has been services available. There has been opportunity after opportunity. We have injected money beyond. And so I don't understand why they think another program with more money is going to fix the issue. I just don't get that because it hasn't fixed anything. Government doesn't fix anything and it doesn't matter. Maybe lowering cost of, of healthcare, maybe providing more services to younger children so that they don't find themselves on the streets getting in trouble. I don't know. Maybe it's the parents who need more of the help than the child does. Mm. Thank you, Lori. I'm going to ask, this is sort of a, um, a clarification question, it's expand on, I'm going to start with you, Lori, explain, clarify, or rebut anything that you have said or that the other side has said in the forum. So this is an opportunity to expand on what you've said or rebut something you've heard from the other side. Um, I'm not, I'm, I'm not going to waste my time. I'm not going to waste my time rebuttal, rebuttaling anything. I mean, they, they have... I'm not saying that childcare is not needed in our community. I'm just saying that this is not the avenue that we need to go. I don't think that you should take from innocent children. You know, there's a saying called you rob, you, you rob Paul to pay Peter. And that's exactly a rob Peter to pay Paul. And that's exactly what this initiative is doing. It is taking the food off of innocent children's and you're, and you're concerned about children. That's what this whole entire thing is, is the healthy children. But when you're taking away from the children to provide to another child at $8.2 million last year, 12 point some million dollars this year, that's a lot of money going out of the household of middle in income people who are across the board, the backbone of Whatcom County. 
And so when you tell me that you care about children, you are not telling me that you care about children because there is more children that you are going to hurt than you are going to help. And that is across the board. How many children are out there right now in households, middle in class income versus the children that you think you're going to help in this child care? You tell me the statistics. And if you can tell me that there's more kids that need help right now than the kids that are going to be in houses hurting, you might bring me to your table. But until then, you don't. Thank you, Lori. Same question for the pro side, expand on, explain, clarify, or rebut anything that you've said or the other, other side has said thus far in the forum. Thank you. That's a nice invitation for open time. Yeah. You know, um, I do want to clarify something. Um, when we invest in things that are important to us, we see an impact. And we saw this with families with children experiencing homelessness in Whatcom County. Pre-pandemic, we had gotten that waiting list down into the teens. Um, and I share this with you because that was a lot of years of really hard work. We worked on investing in programs, building services, building access. And what we saw was we got to almost functional zero in our community for families with children. And that was a moment of celebration. And then the pandemic hit. And now we've seen that waiting list balloon again. And, um, and so it's just, it's really important that we remember we have to feed the things that we want to grow and to flourish. And right now we are under-resourced for families with kids in this community. We want, Lori, I, I love your description of what you've been able to do for your family. And we want all kids to have that opportunity. We want every family to be able to have the choices and the resources to be able to thrive here and keep Whatcom County as their home. And right now that's just not what we have. Um, we have a situation where there are 5,000 fewer childcare spots than are needed for this community, and that has a big impact. I also recognize that this is a cost, and um, it's a cost I'm happy to pay. I'm happy to contribute my seven or eight dollars per month. That turns into eight to ten million dollars every year, which is a huge return on investment. Pennies can go a long distance uh, when we compile those resources together. Thank you, Emily. So now I'm going to thank all of you for participating in this um, spirited and lively conversation. And I'm going to ask each side to present their two minute closing remarks. And so pro side, you may speak first. Closing remarks. Two minutes. And you can share. Oh, we can share. Oh. Yay. Yeah. Mike, you go first. Within two minutes. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> uh, well, quite simply, I am one of those community partners, and uh, I've done a lot of research and and um, certainly supported children for decades in the community. So I feel very strongly that this is a, a positive move. Never come out uh, in support of anything, and I. One friend of mine said, "Hey, Switzerland, welcome to the conversation." So mm -hmm. here I am. Um, but I would like to say one thing and then give the floor to Emily. And, and that is, uh, I was reading a book the other day. Uh, the author's name is David Wagner. And there was a quote in the book and it said, children are the living messages we send to a time we will not see. And so quite simply, I just asked what, uh, what message are we sending? That, that, that's how I would sum it up. I want folks to muster a bunch of courage. Uh, I, I support this. I say yes, vote yes. And, and let's see what kind of message we're going to send to the future. Emily? I should have gone first. It's hard to follow that, Mike. Um, I want to I, I want to say thank you for having us. I think it's through these really great conversations that we can be our best selves uh, for our community. This is an effort that is really a labor of love. This is about being smart with resources, really thinking about how efficient can we be, but making sure that we don't use excuses to say no because something isn't perfect. Nothing is perfect. We're humans. We're going to have to figure this out together, but we have to stay in it and engage. And right now, if we don't 
invest significantly and families and kids here, we are going to continue to see the devastating consequences for generations to come. And I don't think we can afford to do that. And I don't think the voters of Whatcom County feel like we can afford to do that. We see them show up time and time again to support children and families here. This is a great way to be able to make some critical investments that will benefit every single person and family here in Whatcom County. And I'm proud to be a part of this effort. Thank you for having us. Thank you, Mike and Emily. And Lori, your turn for closing statement. Two minutes. Well, I mean, obviously, our children are the most important thing that we have. Um, and they are the the future of our world. But again, I just can't put my, I can't throw myself behind this initiative when I'm thinking of so many other families that are going to be offset by this and the rest of the, the taxes that are going to be hitting their tables. Um, you know, just, I mean, right now we have the elderly care that is setting in the Supreme Court in Washington that we were supposed to start collecting on at 58 cents per every hundred dollars. That is going to come to fruition in January where people are gonna take 50 cents out of every hundred dollars, not including every bit of the rest of the tax that are hitting every single family right now, the high taxes in the gas, the food, the electricity. Um, I mean, I called, I called the cable company, the phone company. I, I called the trash, the water, sewer, water disposal. I called each and every one of them and asked them how much our increases are going to be in 2023. It was astronomical. And so I am four children. I have 25 grandkids. My youngest grandson is four months old. My oldest granddaughter is 26. I adore my kids. I adore the children that are around me and I want the best for them. But I think we need to come back to the table and rethink this whole entire process to where we can benefit everybody, but not at the cost of so many. Thank you, Lori. On behalf of the League of Women Voters, I thank the speakers for being here today and for their interest in civil discourse and community engagement. Voters can find more information about the elections online at vote411.org and in your voter pamphlet. Ballots will be mailed October 19th, 2022. And here is the official ballot text. Your ballot must be postmarked or in a ballot bo drop box before 8 p.m. on November 8th, 2022. Please remember to sign the ballot envelope and if mailing by postal service, we recommend mailing early. Thank you so much for joining us tonight, everybody. There's your voter checklist. We appreciate you so much. And the most important thing is to vote, engage in the process. Good night, everybody. Thank you so much. Thank you for having us. Yeah, thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah, thanks. Thank you very much. Appreciate, Appreciate you all. Appreciate you. Appreciate you too.